This is Angola, the Louisiana State Penitentiary, the largest maximum security prison in the United States. Six times a year, they open their gates to the local community and families of inmates for the Angola Rodeo. Here, some prisoners sell their hobby crafts. Others risk their lives as cowboys in the ring. Big Questions asks, is this rodeo a positive program toward rehabilitation, or are these inmates merely exploited for the entertainment and the financial benefit of the prison? Armed robber. I'm a second degree murder. Second degree murder. For murder. Second degree murder. A large portion of our uh, population are here for second degree murder. In Louisiana, it carries a mandatory life without the possibility of parole sentence. It's a family oriented day, and uh, you're very in a very safe environment, even though you're in a maximum security prison. And all of this leads up to the wildest show in the South at two o'clock. Believe it or not, y'all come to the right rodeo because I think this is going to be one of the best rodeos you're going to see popcorn in the arena for Gus and Girl, I promise you. Suited up in helmets and vests, these inmates who have had no training in rodeo will compete in six different rodeo events throughout the day. It's something, that, it's something you, you could do instead of getting into negative stuff, I come out here and do something positive. In this scenario, inmates are financially incentivized for taking part. The last one to leave their hula hoop wins $250. They colorblind. There's no such thing as seeing red. You move, they're coming for you. Most part, for the win a little money. Second, I really just, you know, I like the excitement. I didn't like it at first when I came. Then I got used to the thrills and the adrenaline rushes and just started liking the crowd, really. Like the crowd. This is Angola, once a slave plantation, now a maximum security prison with 6,300 inmates set on 18,000 acres of Louisiana land. Assistant Warden Gary Young has been with the prison for more than 25 years. So I'm just wondering if kind of overall people think, oh, Angola's kind of doing it right. I, I hope that people think Angola's doing it right because we really are. Angola is its own self-sustaining community. The Mississippi River is on three sides. Angola is a working farm and actually a self-sustaining enterprise with inmates working on the farm. There are stark buildings that serve as historical throwbacks to a time when life was dark for these convicted of the grisliest of crimes. There are also chapels, vocational workshops, a hospital, a museum, and the rodeo arena built entirely by inmates for their own big biannual show. It's, it's good for the inmates to get a chance to come out and experience, you know, like two hours of no words about the life sentence they got. The rodeo raises eyebrows, but more importantly, provides much needed money for the prisoner reentry program. It's a number of things. It, uh, it funds a lot of things for our inmate population that our normal budgets don't. But uh, it also funds our correction to reentry court program, which is one of the most cutting edge programs of its kind in the country right now. The prison defends these activities and the rodeo as part of their rehabilitation program. We're teaching about uh, 13 or 14 various vocational programs from 
horticulture to uh, auto mechanics to uh, small engine repair, welding, and then if he does have the opportunity to get out, then we have, in some fashion, we have begun a re-entry program for him. The most important part of the social mentor is to work with them to change their hearts. If you don't get that component, you're going to have a guy that gets out and recidivates. They're going to come back in. You've got to change the behavior that brought them to prison. The prison defends the rodeo as part of their prisoner reentry program, even though Angola has the highest number of prisoners serving life sentences. 6,300, 42, 4,300 are serving very long sentences. 73 men and one woman sit on death row. There's some guys that uh, have participated a long time in the rodeo, but uh, I, I'm never going to call them a legend because we don't want to make them heroes. Some may view this as a gladiator blood sport that challenges human dignity and the value of life. Yet others see this as pure entertainment. The, uh, the gladiators didn't have an option. They were thrown into the Colosseum through no uh, control of their own. Our guys are not because they choose to do what they do. I mean, it's our choice if we want to go out there or not. It's no get out there. We right. sign up for it. Yeah, we sign up. Then they give us a sheet with the event. So it ain't no such. You don't sign up and they just push you on anything. You got a paper with them events, convict poke, a pinball. So I mean, it's, if you don't want certain events, you're going to sign up for it. You're not going to get it. They sign up, they're medically able, and uh, they, they, we have safety nets involved with it. The offender population works very, very diligently to preserve the rodeo. It's a great opportunity for them. A lot of them, they haven't really uh, had a lot of positive things in their life, and so this gives them a, a, a break in the monotony of, of being incarcerated. They get to come out, interact with the public some. Sit down, ask a lot of be my or rock, and God me, let me be the last man sitting. Bust out. It's the most dangerous, but it's, I love it. Nobody's gonna stay on the back of the bull. You coming off, everybody's coming off at about the same time. Hold on tight. Well, it's just, it's fast and it's dirty. While prison jobs vary from two cents to 75 cents an hour, winning up to $250 at the rodeo is like striking gold. And all seven, well, all eight bulls are trying to get all eight of us. And the meat kind of represents life because you know you always got a lot of problems going on. Bull riding falls most in line with the traditional rodeo, except prisoners are amateurs at the sport. Their only experience is if they competed last year or the year before that. Riders get a good grip. 
witnessed here in bareback riding. Hold on for eight seconds and you qualify for the next round, which pulls in even more money, $250. When you're out there, like, what do you, do you feel? Fear? Do you feel adrenaline? What's it like? You feel a, it's like a mixture of all of it. The fear really keeps you from getting hurt. You know, the adrenaline helps you. Come on, Matthew, you ride those blocks. Give you your speed. You, know, you mix them together, it's, it's, it's a good mix. I've been a competitor my whole life. I like to get my all in everything I do. <laughs> In the wild horse race, three men teams aim to harness the horse by using a short rope to reel in the bronco. The goal is to get one teammate to mount the horse and race for the finish line. So you gotta be aggressive, you can't be scared. Cowboys grip a plastic cup and a rope. Their goal is to get just one drop of milk from the cow's teeth. I'm a daredevil. I like that adrenaline rush. <laughs> Convict Poker is the most dangerous event out here. Last man to leave his chair wins and takes home the jackpot of $250. You sit at the table four with like some fake cards, last one in the chair, the bull hits the table, last one sitting in the chair, they win. Well, I sit down at the table with my back to the bull, but I have my elbows tucked in like this here to keep them safe in case I do be the first one to get hit. Well, you come from the side, it won't be able to do no real damage. That's why they don't like getting at the table with me, because they know I ain't gonna run. I sit down and look at the dude in front of me, which is a C2. Every time the bull get ready to hit the table, his eyes do that, get by that big. See a lot of people, they hear that noise, and they think they just run and slap over. Most of the time, they duck their head and toss. <laughs> yeah. If you don't win, you got hit. I, I mean, I didn't got tore up. No broke bones. So. When I'm in the arena, I block the crowd out. I, I kind of zone out. I don't even pay attention to the crowd. What's going through your mind in those, those few seconds that you're just that you're just waiting there? I mean, that seems so suspenseful for me. The truth? I'm praying. <laughs> Ain't nothing in my mind. I'm praying. <laughs> I pray. No man. I am not scared. I am not afraid to die. I'm a daredevil. The one where they were on the sled with the water. Uh, that was that was a new different thing. Give me water. Give me water. Bring a little water now. Bring a little water, sugar, even a little once in a while. Bring a little water, sugar, bring a little water now. Bring a little water, sugar, even a little once in a while. Don't you see me coming? Don't you see me now? Don't you see me coming? Even a little once in a while. Bring a little water, sugar. Don't see me come a running, come a running now. See me come a running, give a little watch and run now. Give a little water, see me come a running, give a little watch and run now.
Um, we've had some broken bones over the years, but there are all sorts of safety nets involved in the rodeo. Ambulances are on standby. Although deaths are rare, like in all rodeos, there are numbers of injuries. It's a rush. I just like it. I like everything's a rush, really. Everything you do here is a rush. I just, it's a rush. Then you, you get out of here for one day. The penitentiary, really and truly, you come out here, you just in your own world, having fun. I had, at one time, I had dreamed of being in the NFL. I thought I was going to be a football player. Well, they hype like it's like being in the Super Bowl. So they really buck you up. Yeah, I guess that's just like any like NFL game. When the crowd starts hollering and NBA, they holler too. When you go out there, they holler. They cheer for you. They make sure like if somebody fall off and get hurt, they give them their support. And so this rodeo kind of gives me like a, a semi, like, you know, it, it, it helps me accomplish that semi dream. Like I'm still a professional bullfighter instead of a professional football player. It uh, gives him the opportunity to show them that he's different. That he's not the same guy that came in, you know, five, six, maybe 10, 15 years ago, that he's different. If you look around the arena here, you know, normally there's 11,000 people in here. That uh, he's going to have 11,000 people that applaud for him. And the feeling they get whenever those folks are cheering him on. So for a short while, his self-esteem is raised. He's done something really well. I'm, I'm sure it's indescribable. It gives me a little more hope, make me hold on a little longer, you know, try to do a little better, you know, just for them and for me. So there's a lot of, uh, like a lot of psychological things that go into the rodeo. In addition to the rodeo, hobby crafts are sold by the inmates. Money made from these sales fund future hobby projects. I'm ASC certified in brakes, and steering, and suspension. I'm basically repairing the Hummers and the Amalances. I'm learning diesel engines now instead of gasoline. The rodeos are very profitable and can earn up to $5 million a year for the Angola prison. A couple of chess boards, red box banks, a few wood burnings. And I do that after I get off work because it's an unwinding period. It's a relaxing period for me. And it just soothes me and calms me down and where I'm able to get a good night's sleep. We're real tedious with it, uh -huh. and we push each other to be better. So every project we do, we try to do the next one better and better and better. It's not like we are trying to compete with furniture companies and game companies or anything. It's just that we're just trying to get good at what we do. Right. We get a feel of uh, giving back a little bit because we're able to drop prices so people can buy things at a nice price, especially since all the drama that's been going through in Louisiana lately with the hurricanes and the disaster. We feel a bit sense of pride by helping them rebuild their lives and their homes. That's nice, man. You may be yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And made it for scrap. Thank you. Good job. You're riding today. I'm known. My nickname was Tattoo. I don't have a tattoo in them when I should play sports in high school. My high school coach gave me a name because I should hit so hard. Make sure you stay to the very last. What I do is I take the head, I take the tail, I take the toe. And I give them something so exotic, like you can't buy it nowhere in the streets. I don't play sports no more, so this is what I do right here. And this is what to try and get my mind out of it. But just talking about it now, it just, you know, it's just, it's, it's all. I'm an automotive instructor. And so I do that five days a week, eight hours a day. And so dealing with students and other workers and ostrich, Oh. Yeah, so that's like the high-end stuff, the money clips that are made out of the same thing. Uh, and I think I'm pretty good at it. I actually won first place in the leather competition today. It's not all the way cut, so how did I braid it right here? And it's just a matter of learning how to twist and do things like that. Just different things that I do that I like creating. Nobody would like to be known by their worst mistakes. We try and uh, help them better themselves through programming and things like that and give them an opportunity. What have we done with the rest of our lives? And I've tried to atone for that and do better 
over that time. They're better than their worst mistake. I left Angola for eight years to go as a missionary to another prison and then came back here in 2010 to take over automotive program for the reentry. I've found meaning and purpose for what I do inside of the prison system. When I'm able to help other young men that get back out and go back out in society and have a job and work and are supporting their family, then I'm giving back from in here. A lot of those guys were first time felony offenders. It was say a crime of passion. Uh, whether it was a drug deal going bad or they killed the wife who was cheating or the man she was cheating with. There's a lot of those scenarios here. A lot of those guys had 40 hour a week jobs before they came to uh, prison. Going into the hobby shop and creating things helps me say release uh, this enjoyment of doing something different than what I'm doing all during the day. Once they got here and they got uh, acclimated, they just looked for normalcy. So they, uh, they found a job here in the prison. They like to go to work. It gets them out of the dormitories. That's Python, and, and this is a little bit wider. Um, and it, once you find out something, yeah, I can cut it down to a 36 feet. Okay. okay? Okay, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. At the end of the day, they're doing something productive, whether it's for the prison, which they kind of view at this point as their community. This is their house. They're going to be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm only here 40 hours a week. This is their house, and I'm just here for a short time. I'm sleeping now. I want to go home. 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 My favorite event is the Gus and Glory event. That's the last event. This is of their own free choice. Folks, this is known, of course, as I'm gonna call and bull. I'm gonna call It's where you him. take a, a token off a 2,000 pound bull. That's a big mean bull, man. I don't know. Time. You all right? There's a host Damn. of others you around here. Can you step beside him. I don't want to. <laughs> I think I got a fractured rib, man. It hurts to breathe. And it's the most, I'm saying you win the most money in that event. I want to go home. I want to go home. It, it, it takes a little bit of strain off my family having to send me money. But I didn't, when I was on the street, I didn't really ask to, them for too much. Got out and got it on my own. It helped them accumulate money to take care of themselves in prison and to try to get an attorney to get out of prison. It helps them to be able to finance the fight for freedom. Let's go. Well, guys, you got to get in there and challenge them if you want to no, no. <laughs> Why not? I might be a little off my rock, but I ain't that crazy. Wanna go home? I wanna go. Far as sensing you scared, no. Cause in a sense, they they wild, mean, and they scared. They got especially kind of uh, gussy glory. You got 30 human beings coming to them. They don't know if you're trying to put them on a plate or something. So I'm sure they scared too. Are you ever concerned about, about death? No, ma'am. You come out here, it's our day out here, we're not in their prison. We're out here having fun. That's why I do it. And most of these other fellas, they do it the same reason. And then you win money, too. I like to give them a good show. Are you rooting for the bull or are you rooting for the prison? No, I'm rooting. I'm always rooting for the prisoner. prisoner yeah. Absolutely. Oh, the prisoner. Yeah. I'm rooting for the bull. It's the underdog. The <laughs> it's always the bull. <laughs> I thought the rodeo was a little different than I was expecting it to be. More violent than I thought it was going to be. I've never been to a rodeo before. It was some of the stuff was a little bit rough, I guess. So I, yeah, that was, it was a little jarring. <laughs> it feel good for them to come watch me, but they they'd be more terrified and concerned about my life. And your family comes and they visit with you, and then. You have to go back to your dormitory, and they have to get back in their car and go back to their home. I mean, there's definitely a correlation, but you know, the thing, uh, the the thing that's different between the bulls and the inmates, we do everything we can here at the Department of Correction to give these guys 
uh, mental health treatment, medical treatment, substance abuse, anger management, vocational trades. So we're not trying to keep them caged up. We're not trying to treat them like animals. Uh, they were wilder on the outside than they are on the inside, if you ask me. This rodeo poses as many questions as it answers. It challenges our very notions of human dignity, the value of life, punishment, rehabilitation, and restorative justice. It's hard, you know, you gotta realize when I, when I come here, my, the age my kids is, my grandkids that age now. You lose so much when you become incarcerated. And my daughter asked me when she was like 14 years old, she said, Daddy, when you coming home? I said, I don't know, but I'm coming soon. Now she was 14 years old, back then she's 28 now. And I was like, I'm coming home soon. She said, uh, I'm going to be a lawyer and get you out of here. I said, no, don't go be no lawyer. I said, I want you to go be something that you can help people in the world and be. I'm going back down in Louisiana if I have to walk. Yes, I had a little letter, oh, 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 come from my brown, oh, I'm gonna take a walk, baby, I'm gonna leave this town, see, that's two hollers, and it's another one by them.